Apple's Tim Cook made the case for more regulation of big tech in New York just in the last hour. We all have to be intellectually honest. And we have to admit that what we're doing isn't working. That and the uh, technology needs to be regulated. There are, there are now too many examples where the uh, no rails uh, have resulted in a great damage to society. Joining us at Post 9 this morning, former FBI special agent in charge of the cyber division in New York, Leo Tadeo, now chief information security officer at Six Terra. Good to see you. Thanks, Carl. Welcome Thanks, back. Thanks, how, how, how damaging is this? And what steps should consumers take to try to limit their footprint? Well, we all know it's almost impossible to limit your footprint. If you're participating in the modern e-commerce economy, you're going to leave exhaust, some data behind that it's used, that's used by investors and retailers to better market towards you. The question is, what can you control? When we've seen uh, legislators in Europe and in California push for more control for the consumer. For example, consumers are entitled to know what type of data is collected on them, what it's used for, and they also have the right in some jurisdictions to limit the use of that data. So we're seeing a trend towards more consumer rights, towards protecting their data. But as we saw from the segment, when it's used in a way that's supposedly anonymized, uh, consumers may not have the right to know how it's used or may not have the right to limit its use. Uh, the question is whether it's really anonymized, and we've seen certain algorithms uh, that are capable of breaking through those, uh, those anonymization techniques to get to the true identity. Usually, I mean, often on your phone, it'll say, will you allow your location? I always say no. But does that do any good? Well, it limits the known location for that particular moment. But there are geolocators on your phone that are active when you may not know it. For example, you could activate an application and it's persistent, uh, meaning the geolocation, a part of that application, stays active even though you're no longer on the app. Uh, so you have to turn on and off your geolocation actively uh, to make sure that it's not working when you don't know it. You know, I just think about a movie like The Fugitive. Like, you couldn't do it. You couldn't, no. you couldn't go off the grid today, even if you tried, given the fact that we are so interconnected and there is so much data being, being collected. 400 companies, Leslie. Mm -hmm. um, how much are hedge funds and other investors paying for this data? And if you do see some of these regulations or some of these guardrails put in place, what does that do to what has become quite a flourishing cottage industry? It's a, that's a very good question. Hedge funds themselves have been saying privately that they're worried about a, a blowback of sorts, especially with all that we're hearing in terms of privacy and awareness that consumers have with regard to how their data is being used. In terms of cost, different types of data sets cost different amounts, and they are worth more to hedge funds. So, for example, uh, we were told that geolocation data sets is well as credit card transaction data sets are worth more than, say, satellite imagery, which hedge funds have found are a little bit lumpier in terms of the insights that they provide from a trading standpoint. And these things can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars on the premium side. Wow. I mean, the thing I'm hearing from you, Leo, is uh, you can control some things, but it's an active choice. It's in the, all the passive stuff is happening really without you really even knowing it. That's right. absolutely right. Yeah. Any, any purchase you make, any store you visit, any toll you go through, that type of data is readily available and it's marketed. How about, how about the whole concept of shadow profiles? I, I know there's been reports about Facebook, for example, being able to glean and collect data on people that aren't even using the site. How do you mitigate for that? Right, well, the idea behind the shadow profile is that even though it may be anonymous or even though you don't opt in to sharing information, certain algorithms can identify you. There's really, uh, it's very difficult in today's uh, modern society. Whenever someone you know posts a photo of you, there's a potential for facial identification to recognize you. We had a, a real problem at the FBI with covert identities. The teenagers that are growing up today posting images of themselves in true name are going to be very difficult to deploy in a covert manner in 10 years wow. because those images are saved and are searchable.